Ahoy, Swab. Captain Jeff the Pirate here. I share this service. Or in this case, should I be saying, Ahoy, ye test subjects. Or, the captain here, making yet another appearance here at Aperture Gaming. Because it be time for an Aperture Gaming review. And today I be asked to be reviewing Sea of Thieves. Arr. Now, this game originally came out in the year 2018. But just now, just now, it finally be sailing to the shores of the PlayStation console. So if you own a PS5, this review be for you. Arr. So let's get into the review. Series. As I be saying, this game came out in six years ago. It's Sea of Thieves. It be neither a sequel, prequel, or in between quel, as Test Subject 1337 be saying. No, it be a game all its own. It had it share similarities with some other titles, like along that of The Black Flag of the Assassin's Creed Fire, or The Skull and Bones from the other Ubisoft project. Team! This gem of a game be developed by Rare, and it be published by Xbox Game Studios, so it be a wee bit discombobulating seeing that on a PlayStation screen. Plot! Like some of our pirate-based games, ye start off as a sailor slash pirate, trying to find the legendary Sea of Thieves. There, after a wreck, ye be met by the late great pirate Lard, who give who using his ghost-like powers help you find the Sea of Thieves. There it is your job to pillage, plunder, and be the best darned pirate in all the seven seas. Your job is to sail around, find treasure, recruit a crew, and fight off the ne'er-do-wells including skeletons, phantoms, coral monsters, other players, and giant sea beasts along with ghost ships. Gameplay controls. The gameplay controls the E in first person mode. You switch between sword. You pick one of two weapons to work. You work with two weapons. It can be sword or it can be a blunderbuss, pistol, or sniper rifle. You have a variety of options. Anyway, as you sail around, you have to pretty much do everything. You have to raise and lower the anchor, raise and trim the sails. You have to turn them to catch the wind in certain situations. You have to watch out for the reefs. Reefs are being shot at because you would flood. You have to bail the water and you have to patch the holes. And the more people you have with you and the bigger the ship, you have to make sure you are in communication with your crewmates to coordinate where to drop anchor, how to get the treasure, the way the, sh the, way the sails be working, and to coordinate cannon fire against enemy opposition. So yes, this is a very co-op experience where communication is key, and also having to carry around treasure and find the keys to open said treasure, and checking maps, because sometimes you have to go and look for buried treasure, so there'll be a lot of things to do in this game. It ain't just sail from here to there. It has weak, so it kind of reminds me of Black Flags, Skull and Bones, Pirate 101, Skies of Arcadia, and like I said, uh... And, here's, and I'd also say it uh, reminds me a wee bit of Legend of Zelda, The Wind Waker. Graphics. Graphic-wise, this game, it'd be looking a wee bit cartoonish. In fact, there'd be some parts in the game, it reminds me of The Legend of Zelda, The Wind Waker. And it'd be enjoyable. I like the way it looks. It doesn't have to take itself too seriously in terms of visuals, and I like it. The cartoon element works for it. Audio. Audio plays a very important factor. Aside from communicating with your crewmates, there would be great music in the game. The sound effects of the cannon firing and the swords clashing be well. And you can play one of our instruments along with your crew. And, well, the music, it sounds grand. So very good job on the audio. Multiplayer. Now, while you can play solo, with a one-person operating vessel. It is, in fact, a multiplayer game. It is made and intended to be that way. So, 
because of all the things that you have to do in game. DLC! Hi, there will be in fact DLC for this game. When it was announced, there were three editions standard, upgraded, and super upgraded, for which you could pre download the game from. Also, in game, you, got, you, you get gold to buy items, but then you can also use real world money to get more e to get some more special items if you don't have the time or the patience to try to unlock them. There'll also be special events, but yes, there is a bunch there is a whole bunch of DLC for this game. <laughs> Issues. I was doing some research about this. So someone said that the game be in some state of perpetual bugginess. Now I did encounter a few bugs here and there myself. The, the game was saying there was a hole in the ship, and me and my crewmate, we checked it out, and there was no hole. They had everything patched, and all the water was bailed. So there'll be some technical aspects I think they're constantly trying to fix. Given how the game is six years old, and the whole cross-platforming thing, I understand. Now, the, as for the ships you're in, they don't respond instantaneously to which way you're turning them. They don't turn on a dime. The, yeah, but that's not a technical issue. That's I think that's kind of going for some level of realism. So, yeah, the ships you pilot in Black Flag and Skull and Bones. Yeah, they're, yeah. So basically, you have to figure out the best way to navigate with the turn-in and the sails. Also, if you also if your vessel sinks and you haven't turned in the treasure, you can't claim it. So then you'd have you've lost the treasure. Fortunately, there is a chance for you to try to retrieve it at some point later on. So there'll be some difficulty here and there. But yeah, some minor technical issues and some difficulty depending on how how you get thrown into the game. Buy, rent, or pass. For me, that game is a definitive buy. We uh, didn't have access to the console to play it years ago when it first came out. So when it came to the PS5 showers, we'd be like, yes! So it'd be available on the Xbox, on the computer, and on the PlayStation, it'd be here, there, and everywhere. So it is a definitive buy. Overall score. All right, like I said, I know the title will be six years old, but it is great to finally see it coming to the PS5, and it's enjoyable. It was first, so I've been slowly gathering up a crew online, and it was fun because the more people you have with you, the better it is. It ain't just you against the world. Just make sure. <clears throat> Arr, pardon me. Make sure, like I said, communication is key. You figure out who's who's navigating, who's uh, repairing. You gotta make sure to also feed yourself. You gotta, basically this is a very hands-on title where you can't just assign it to someone and say, oh, you have to do this. Look, explore the islands, explore the seas, swim, fight off behemoths, fight sharks, fight other players. This be a grand title. So we here at Aperture Gamings, we give it a nine and a half. Out of 10. I thoroughly enjoyed this game and it is great. If, it, if you ain't into multiplayer, there might be a bit of a, it might be a bit of a scare off, but there'd be a bunch of cool things about this game. I'm also interested in seeing the uh, Monk, the uh, Tales of Monkey Island event and the Pirates of the Caribbean event, among all the other things they have going on. And also be sure to check here on YouTube because there, I think I saw a video somewhere of someone giving a whole bunch of tips for how to start to introduce you to the game and how to get you ready for it. Well, that's all the time we have for, for this episode. Until next time, this will be Captain Jeff. Manage, who they convinced to come back here to do another pirate game review for y'all. <laughs> so this be Aperture Gaming. We give the game a 9.5 out of 10. So I thank ye for watching. Until next time, uh, game on, have a nice day, and as always, arr.